Hello, everyone, and uh, welcome to the Mentor Talk, the unique destination for insightful conversations with experienced professionals. I am your host, Suzette, the CEO of Sales Pro for You, and as usual, more about me during this episode. So, in this podcast, we will delve deep into the minds of accomplished mentors who share their expertise and insights. And as you know, each interview is a real treasure trove of practical advice personal anecdotes, and your doorway to sustainable business success. So whether you are a startup or a scale-up or SME and looking for professional support in sales, marketing, or even in business and development, or if you are an experienced uh, professional, this podcast show is your go-to resource. So and uh, without further delay, let's start into today's uh, enlightening conversation with Alex Valisidis. I hope I pronounced this correctly, Alex. Valisidis. Valisidis. Okay, perfect. <laughs> so sorry for this. But you know, my Greece is not so good as yours. No problem. <laughs> okay, so um, if I'm right, you have more than 35 years of experience in sales with a proven track record of increasing sales and revenue for companies. From 2008 until 2012, you managed your own business in Greece, uh, providing internet access to tourists with regards to the transition from telephone to mobile phones with rooming and Wi-Fi. So very uh, interesting decade, I would say. And um, afterwards, uh, you moved in 2012 to Spain and worked uh, as a sales rep for HP. And also, uh, during this time, you started your again your own business of uh, your company named um, V Paragon, uh, a sales outsourcing consultancy based in Barcelona, Spain. And you are helping SES companies um, sell their software in new local or international markets. And in short, uh, I hope this is correct, but you will tell me uh, in a second, you say about yourself, you become a better person through all this experience in sales and the person you are today is much different and improved compared to who you were before. So welcome, Alex. Yes, thank you very much, Suzette, to have me in your podcast. Everything that you said about me is almost correct. I need to make some, some corrections here. So it is true. I have over 35 years of sales experience. So sales is what I do uh, all my life, since I was 17, 18, I, I've done all kinds of sales you, you can imagine, from selling timesharing, door-to-door, call calling, call center. And then uh, when I had my own business, we were selling um, telecom products for the tourist industry in Greece. Um, and then I upgraded to more sophisticated sales here in Spain, Barcelona. Uh, I used to have increased my own business since the year 2000 and not the year 2008 that you said. And that is important because uh, my business was selling telecom products for the tourism industry. That means we installed Wi-Fi systems in hotels. We had the collaboration with an American company providing operated assisted phone call services. So we sold the service in uh, hotels. Then we had the a collaboration with the Greek Telecom. And uh, I created my own calling cards, which were specific for the tourism industry. That business was so fantastic that if you went to Greece after the Olympic Games in the year 2005, 6, 7, it was very probably that you would have used one of my services one way or the other. This business, unfortunately, started to tremble in the year 2008. And the reason was not the financial crisis in Greece. The reason was that the, there was a, 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 a shift in the telecom industry. So before there was a transition that lasted approximately 20 years uh, before the the telecom was a monopoly, a state monopoly globally, and then it started to get free, liberated until the absolute dominance of the mobile telephone companies. So in the year 2008, roaming costs in Europe uh, dropped. That made uh, me sell less calling cards. 
Wi-Fi started to be offered for free. Smartphones came in the market. Uh, Skype, uh, all all the new communication, which at the end brought the whole family of my business uh, to an end. That was a very slow process. It started 2008, and I unfortunately had to close my business in the year 2012. Because my wife is Spanish, I came here to Spain and I started, I started from scratch again. As you mentioned, I was sales and customer support for HP here in Barcelona for the printers. I was, through my experience, the best salesperson of the whole HP, no, not only for the German market. I was doing the German market because, as, as you know, I'm half German as well. So I was the best salesperson of HP. Then I upgraded, I started selling technology, I started selling software solutions um, for disaster and backup, for cyber threat intelligence. But if you have your own business, Suzette, it's very hard to be an employee again. So I thought, why work for other people and don't start my own business? So I started Biparagon. Biparagon was a success. Immediately I had clients. And since then, that is what I'm doing. I am selling SaaS and software, but the last three years, we also sell complex physical products with a degree of uh, of complexity. That means robots, um, medical devices, and so on. I am impressed. You know, I'm just, uh, I, I keep continuing writing down <laughs> a lot of questions. So I'm so sorry if I'm not, you know, straight... Um saying the first question. So thank you so much for correcting me and uh, giving this very nice and also brief uh, in a nutshell introduction about yourself and your passion, of course, which is sales, or maybe which is also uh, funding uh, businesses, because this is what you did. I mean, twice. Yes. And uh, I would like to ask you, maybe it's a personal question, but uh, it's maybe also, you know, about your background in sales. So what was your first sales job? So the first sales job you, you started, maybe this is the job which, uh, you know, yeah, you got on fire because of this job, you know, finally yes. doing sales. So, so let, let me explain here a little bit. And I hope this information is going to be very interesting for you and, and your audience. So uh, the first sales job that I had were in retail in Germany. Um, I was a very introvert guy. So I was somebody that was raised in a very introvert environment and I was very introverted myself. And that might sound weird to you because uh, people have the imagination that salespeople are extrovert. Uh, but I will get to that too. So, but this introversy made me to desire to, to I looked up to people that were extrovert and that's why I pushed myself. Uh, it, was, it was not easy for me because you have to imagine what is the worst thing for somebody that is introvert is to, to, uh, to face people. So, and, but that pushed me to overcome myself. That was the, the motive. So the retail jobs that I did in Germany, they were easy jobs because one thing is you are in a store and the customer comes inside. And another thing is you go to somebody's shop, you knock the door and you get inside to sell something. So I've seen it all. So trust me, I, I did all the things that you can imagine regarding sales. And where I consider that is my strong point is that besides the, uh, the, the educational, let's say, I studied uh, business administration in Germany, Betriebswirtschaft, but besides the, the theoretical knowledge that I acquired in the university, I also did all the jobs that nobody wants to do. So what I face today as a senior, let's say, salesperson at this level is I see a lack on sales manager having the experience, the hands-on experience about sales. They read it, they studied that, but they didn't walk the walk. So this means um, to make, maybe to make it a bit more precise, uh, 
you could you are offering i mean your your knowledge and your your support in general for companies like for startups or for scale ups for any kind of companies um in terms of let's say you made mistakes right and you learn from those mistakes and you are going to help companies right yeah for for equal situations you know to grow for example so the number one USP of me and my company is our integrity. So I will not start working with everybody because many companies, unfortunately, I would say, direct sales is not worth it for them pursuing because the cost of direct sales, it might not bring the desired results back. So first of all, because before I start any collaboration, I need to have a conversation with the uh, owner of the company. And I say that because I prefer to speak with owners than with uh, managers, uh, because most of the times managers have a employee mentality and employee mindset. We need to have a conversation. And out of this conversation, I will tell them my opinion if we possibly uh, can bring results. Now, what regards the mistakes, you cannot learn without embracing failure. Uh, so uh, many people have the, the, they think salespeople are, are bringing wonders. We don't bring wonders. We cannot promise anything. We promise we will do the best possible we can and eventually bring results. I can tell from the beginning if something can be a success or not through my experience. Yeah, wonderful, I understand. So um, let's speak a bit about the time when you were responsible or when you when you had your company with this uh, with this calling cards, right, for tourists, because it's a very interesting uh, business case yes. for me. So how did you how did you find this 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 business idea? Do you just saw the the demand on the market, or I mean, how 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 did okay. you become you know aware of this situation? Thank you for this question. Um, that, that's a very good question because the calling cards that I invented, and I say invented, uh, you know, when you start a business, I perceive as the most difficult part to have the the good idea, the successful idea. If you have the successful idea, then of course you need to apply um, what you need to do in order to make it a success. But that was an amazing idea for me. And let me explain here a little bit, give you a little bit of background. So the calling cards don't exist anymore because the market changed. But back, back in the day, like when we speak 20 years ago, calling cards was a product that was targeting immigrants. So immigrants were buying calling cards. In the case of Greece, immigrants were from Pakistan, from, from Albania. So those people, they were buying calling cards in order to place cheap calls in their home country. As I had a collaboration with an American company uh, providing operated assisted phone call services, this is an American service. It's a so-called collect call. It's a call where the receiver of the call pays the bill of the incoming call. And that is a very expensive call. So I saw that people are willing to pay a lot of money to place a call. So uh, back then, to give you a proportion, um, one, let's say, normal immigrant calling card would give you 300 minutes to call to the United States. And that was the expense of the card. So on a, on a card that had a five euro face value, 10 cents went to the reseller, so to the mini market, to the hotel, and uh, uh, 10 cents went to the to, to, to the the provider of the of the calling card. In my case, I created a card that gave 10 times less time for the USA, 10 times less time for the USA, but aiming the tourism industry, the tourism market. And that's important for me to say that here, and I will explain to you why. So when I created this card, the telecommunication provider told me you will not sell not even one card because your cards are 10 times more expensive than the rest of the cards. But I created a card where I put an American flag outside, an English flag, a, a European flag, 
and I put just international calling card and I went to sell it in touristy locations only. The card costed me one euro. So I had four euros to play with. I gave one euro to the reseller and the rest three euros were for me. So I had three euro profit per card while the competition had only 10 cents. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I just did the math by myself. Very amazing. <laughs> It's amazing. But let me get here back to one thing because when I say this story, a lot of people um, question my 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 uh, my ethics, okay? I the auction, <laughs> the auction that I was giving to the tourists was the cheapest possible option for a tourist because the tourist used to pay when he was in the cruise ship $20 to connect the call and $5 for each minute further, or he was uh, buying from the hotel one euro per minute. So with my cards, he was talking 30 minutes USA for five euros only. Yes, more expensive than the, uh, than the immigrants, but way less expensive than the options that he had as a tourist. So this means you, you saw the market, you saw the current situation, right? So what opportunities people or tourists could use. And then you said, okay, why not adapting this to the to the user needs, right? And this is what you did at the end. Of course, you made profit out of it, but this is not um, wrong. <laughs> no, no uh, pro profit should not be, there. there is like a mentality, but that's not the case in the United States or, or in England, but in the rest of Europe or maybe in many parts of the world, There is a demonization of people that make money. Making money means that you are a good person, that you offer value to your clients. And we need to go away from this mentality of, uh, so I make money on, on your back. It's not the way it is. It's a win, win, win situation. Yes, I do that, of course, to make profit, but I offer a service to you. You are happy with my service. I am happy selling to you. The reseller was happy. So everybody was happy in this scenario. What's wrong with that? I really like what you just said, you know, the win-win situation or win-win-win situation. So this is exactly why we found Sales Pro for you, right? I mean, in, in our minds, we really would like to make an exception, right? A special case in comparison to this, uh, let's say, dinosaurs, uh, HR companies, you know, hiring people uh, for a lot of money, 10K, 15K. They are squeezing the money out of the companies, you know, for a very good freelance expert. And we are not doing like this, you know, we are not, we, we are offering a very, let's say, affordable price, right? And this is not only the price, it's also about the people. So for us, the people are more important, you know, than the money at the end. So of course, we, we also need to live, we also need to earn some money. But uh, yes, I really like what you just said. But I would like to say to your audience, yeah. the, the thing is that, first of all, let us have a conversation. It doesn't cost money. Let us talk. If I can help you, I will tell you exactly how we could work together. If we cannot work together in terms of a monetary basis, I will be very happy to help you and see you succeeding. So be open in the conversation. Listen to what I have to say. You don't need to adapt that, but I know things. So let's have a call and we take it from there and let's see. Yeah, I very appreciate your mindset. Okay, Alex, another question in terms of uh, the Paragon. So your company uh, offering this uh, support for ZES companies. So maybe you can explain to the audience a bit what is ZES in general and how you help companies who are selling uh, ZES services. Yes. So Viparagon started and still is mainly a SaaS or software uh, sales outsourcing consultancy. A lot of people are getting confused. They think we are a call center. We are not a call center. Call centers have uh, most of the times a B2C um, targeting. They do do or die calls and they just place in calls. They don't do sales. We do sales and the where we can add value is in complex sales scenarios. And in NV Paragon, offers to uh, software companies that they sell a complex software that has specific unique selling points on a niche market 
its services, which are holistic services. That means we take it from A to Z, from understanding your product or service, the solution, the, the software that you are selling, creating our communication strategy, our sales pitch, our marketing emails, LinkedIn communication, sitting together with you on the table and finding out which markets we would like to target within those markets, which prospect companies we would like to target. We find the decision makers of interest, secondary decision makers, influencers, third party players. We find their contact details and then we call them with the intent to generate a discovery call between them and you, where you will explain to them exactly what your software does. You're going to have a techie to techie conversation. After that, we follow up until we close the sale. That is, in a nutshell, what uh, Paragon does and, and, uh, and what it offers. Now, let me say here, let me add something here. There are a lot of companies, as I said at the beginning, where direct sales don't work. What are those companies? To give you an example, SEO agencies, digital agencies, uh, software development companies to an extent. So every company that is on a crazy crowded marketplace, on, on a red ocean, with no clear unique selling point, and the unique selling point, Susanne, refers to the message, doesn't refer to the actual service. So if you say, we are the most competitive digital agency and offer also the best prices, even if you are, you don't have a unique selling point because everybody else claims exactly the same. Yeah, this is like uh, fishing in, let's say, yeah, in the same ocean, right? I mean, if you, yeah, a lot of competitors, so I totally understand. So I would like to speak again about this direct sales thing you just said, um, because it's I'm curious about. So do you believe, because you help those SaaS companies and you help, to, you help them to sell their service, right? to potential clients so in a very smart and direct way so do you still believe that there's any kind of potential or success uh in terms of uh cold calling or cold emailing or anything like this yes thank you for the question that's a very good question there is a demonization of cold calling and and there is a reason for that there is also the trend uh, to have um, to to overemphasize marketing and new technologies, sales since thousands of years happened because somebody goes to someone else and says, "Look, here I have a nice carpet. Would you like to have a look?" That's how things start. So, cold calling. Most of the times when people hear about cold calling, they uh, they bring in their minds this uh, annoying salesperson that is going to call you in the night to sell you insurance or cryptocurrency. Uh, no, of course, that's, that's, that's harassment. That's uh, a very call center type of call calling. We do, we have senior salespeople that call on a B2B basis. So they are placing calls where is a legitimate interest to add value to the receiver of the call to talk about a topic that will help him better his business. So the, the term call call has a bad reputation. What do we do? Do we do call call? Yes, we do call calls, but, but we do them on, on a high level. Uh, and on a, on a B2B level always, because many people, they come also and they question the, the legitimacy of it. So as long as there is a B2B call or an email to the business email of the receiver, there is legitimate interest. We contact this person because he is the CTO of a specific company. We, we don't call his house. We don't email his private email. No, we call him in regards to the value that we can offer. Now, does it bring results? The, 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 the question to all these things, 
because many come and they criticize or oh, on LinkedIn, you should not do uh, uh, cold approaches. Susanne, uh, Suzette, I, I don't really care, to be honest with you. I want to bring results for me and for my clients. We want to sell. And if I sell at the end through this method, I will, I will go for that. Yeah, I completely understand. So for me, it's like, you know, a metal, um, what is it? A metal, a metal with two sides, right? You know, you maybe understand what I'm trying to say. So yes. it's, it's not so easy. There is no, no yes or no, right? Answering this question. So it's not, not that easy at all. I mean, I still believe in, in cold calling. I think it's uh, possible, but this depends also, you know, on the, let's say attitude you have on, you know, what you are trying to to transfer on the phone or how you write your emails. So there's a kind of, let's say, magic behind, right? But there is no recipe you can just find in a book and say, okay, I am now doing this cold calling for this client and this cold calling for this client. So we are humans. So it's, I don't know. Yeah. We are human and we, somebody should hire a, a sales manager that has the soft skills or the human skills, because soft skills are called also human skills. The human skills to be in the position to understand how he will talk to other humans. And that is the part that a lot of people are missing. Because I see also in the description when they ask to, to hire a sales manager, one question that comes very often is, what is your knowledge about XYZ product. That is way down in the in the question scale. You know, obviously it plays a role, but it's not what is going to make the difference. Yeah, you're the right. The difference is going to make the human skills that you have. And let me say here something because I stand for this that I'm going to say. Regardless if you sell, Suzette, oranges or rockets. The sales process, the sales techniques and tactics and charisma and empathy are the same. The product changes. So if you have a person that has a basic understanding of technology and he's a very good salesperson, doesn't matter if he's a specialist on the product. He's, he will learn the product. What he cannot learn is to sell. Alex, uh, the time is flying and I now have, sadly, I have to close, you know, this podcast. <laughs> I'm so sorry, but this, this was so wonderful, beautiful words. So I would like to say that those words are wrapping up our enlightening episode uh, of today's uh, Mental Talk. So thank you so much, Alex Valazidis. I hope I pronounced this correct. This that is time. correct. Yes, yes. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. And just uh, one last words to all the audience. Um, yeah. Remember success is a journey and having the guidance and the wisdom of an experienced professional. I'm flattered a bit, right? About your words. It was so wonderful. Um, makes all the difference. And yeah. And if you have any kind of feedback or if you would like to get support by today's um, expert, Alex Valazidis, yeah. Or you would like to become part of this uh, podcast show, uh, please contact me at uh, mentor at salespro4u.com. So thank you so much, Alex. It was a pleasure talking to you today. Thank you, Suzette, for inviting me. <laughs> thank you. <laughs>